Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Nanam Paramam Dheyam Knowledge is Supreme Hello students, we have been talking about feedback control for last 2-3 weeks. We started with what is the architecture of feedback control, then we looked at how do we assess the stability of feedback control systems. Then in the last week, we looked at how do you synthesize a feedback control system, how do you select what type of a controller to use and lastly we looked at what sort of values, uh, what are the best uh, ways to find out values for controller parameters. In this week, we will go one step further and we will look at how do you improve performance of these feedback controllers by using or doing some additional <coughs> by using some additional mechanisms. These uh, typically are called as advanced controllers from a traditional sense. What I mean by that is uh, these were the advancements proposed over a typical PID control long back. At that time, they were considered as advanced controllers. Nowadays, uh, what we really refer to advanced control as something which uses a model based control strategy or an optimization based control strategy. So, in some books, you will see that uh, the controllers which we are going to see in this week, they are sometimes called as advanced controllers, sometimes they are called as PID enhancements. Just to distinguish from a real uh, state of the art advanced controllers, I will call them as traditional advanced controllers. So you will see that uh, these are the controllers sometimes they use PID control logic itself however sometimes the architecture is different or sometimes uh, the way the controllers are selected or the manipulated inputs are selected is slightly different. So let us uh, look at what are these traditional advanced controllers. So uh, in this week, uh, this part of this week, uh, we will try to see what is the need of uh, going beyond uh, a typical PID controller, single input, single output PID controller which we have seen so far and uh, that will also help us uh, find, uh, motivate uh, the need for these uh, traditional advanced controllers and you should also be able to identify those when you see them on field because we will see that uh, most of these uh, advanced controllers which we will see in this uh, part of the week, uh, they, they are very commonly utilized in chemical industry. So in this part of week, uh, we will go through these 5 advanced uh, control strategies or traditional advanced control strategies. Uh, they will be cascade control, uh, split range control, selective control, ratio control and inferential control. So let us start with cascade control. So in order to motivate the need for cascade control, let me take an example. So let us consider an example of a fired heater. So let us say there is a furnace which is used to heat a process stream at temperature Ti to T. So this is a process stream which has to be heated from some initial temperature to a final very high temperature and this is done by firing a fuel gas. So this fuel enters this furnace, uh, it gets combusted and then uh, its temperature increases and that hot gas, uh, the combusted gas is used to heat uh, this process stream from initial temperature Ti to the final temperature T. So uh, if you apply the principles from last week, uh, here the controlled variable. <coughs> Uh, 
the primary control variable will be uh, the thing for which this particular unit is set up that is to raise the temperature of this stream to temperature T. So, the controlled variable is outlet temperature. And then the manipulated variable is the flow of fuel gas which will be done through the manipulation of the wall. Okay. So, for this system uh, let us uh, consider some example uh, values. So, let us say that <coughs> the transfer function between <coughs> this flow and uh, the temperature which is given by G p is equal to some k p over 5 s plus 1 the time constant is of 5 minutes and it has a dead time of 1 minute. So, tau is 5 minutes and dead time is of 1 minute. So, after the flow changes, uh, this is a fairly multi capacity system uh, where you have multiple phenomena going on when you put in the fuel gas, it will get reacted with oxygen, it will get combusted uh, because of the com heat of combustion, the temperature of this fuel gas which is inside this chamber will increase then it will transfer heat with the process stream and eventually you will see that effect uh, on the final outlet temperature. So, it is a fairly multi capacity process which can be represented as first order plus dead time where in here in this case the dead time is 1 minute and tau is of 5 minutes. And then look at this focus on how this wall operates. So, that will be a wall transfer function. Again it will have some gain and the wall operates typically very fast. So, the time constant of wall is 0.1 minute. So, you can see that the moment a uh, wall is opened uh, within let us say 0.5 minutes uh, the flow would be stabilized. Okay. So, for this system uh, let us consider uh, that so we want to control this temperature. So, we would want to <coughs> implement a control loop. So, you will have a measurement of temperature let us call it a temperature indicating controller, it will have its own set point and it will be used to manipulate the wall. So, this controller will be able to reject any disturbances which are happening in the process stream inlet temperature. So, accordingly it will increase or decrease the flow uh, of fuel gas by opening or closing this wall. Now, let us consider a different type of a disturbance. Let us consider there is a disturbance in the inlet pressure of this fuel gas. Now, let me give you some idea about where these kind of systems are used. Typically, this fuel gas will be an off gas from one of the reactors or some of the processing unit which may have some rich calorific value like unreacted hydrogen or unreacted methane. So, in that case that gas is typically used as a heating source uh, to provide this particular heating. So, now as this is coming from some process there may be some transportation loss so the pressure as well as uh, uh, there might be that op unit might the pressure of operating pressure of that unit might change depending on the length of the pipeline there will be pressure drop. So, all those things accounted this pressure of the inlet gas may fluctuate. It may be that there are some other 10 different processes uh, which are using this fuel gas as a heating source. So, if one of the, the input of one of those uh, streams goes down then this pressure might increase or vice versa depending on it is also about uh, availability and uh, demand. So, this pressure might have fluctuations. So, let us say if there is a fluctuation in this uh, inlet pressure what is going to cause is uh, even for the same wall opening considering that the temperature uh, is at set point the wall will be having uh, the wall will be at its uh, steady state opening. As this inlet pressure has increased there is a net increase in the driving pressure across this wall. So, it will cause an increase in the fuel gas flow. So, even though the controller is not increasing uh, the fuel flow because of a disturbance in this line the flow which is uh, going the flow of fuel gas going to the furnace increases and it will increase uh, according to the transfer function some <coughs> which will be of similar form. So, let us uh, write that transfer function as G d. So, 
so uh, the flow will increase and as the amount of fuel uh, which is going into the furnace has increased uh, it will increase the heat of combustion and in the end it will increase the outlet temperature however if you look at uh, the process transfer function uh, which is uh, the transfer function between this outlet temperature and uh, fuel flow uh, let me represent it as uh, f so it has a dead time of 1 minute so even after the flow has increased up to 1 minute uh, this temperature will not show any effect so the feedback controller will not take any action up to that point only when uh, this temperature starts to deviate uh, this controller will detect that something abnormal has happened and it will try to cut down uh, on the fuel flow by reducing uh, the opening of this wall so the controller will start taking action only after one minute of disturbance so during that one minute excess fuel has gone into this uh, furnace so the temperature ultimate value of this temperature would be substantially higher so let me show you uh, what the simulation uh, shows for this system so here is the corresponding uh, response uh, in a simulation model uh, for this system so you can see that uh, <coughs> up to one minute there is no effect uh, because uh, on the outlet temperature whereas the fuel flow uh, which is happening because uh, increase in the fuel flow is happening because of this uh, disturbance it increases uh, to a high value and it remains there because the pressure disturbance is considered as a step change and then you can see that only after one minute uh, this temperature will start uh, to show any effect uh, there will be a difference between actual temperature and the set point and accordingly the controller will try to reduce the wall opening and then you will see that the fuel gas flow reduces however because of this uh, dead time of one minute the controller did not take any action for one minute uh, so substantial amount of extra fuel went into the system which uh, caused the temperature to rise to a very high value now uh, let us see how can we improve uh, this uh, particular operation of this system uh, to reduce uh, this overshoot in temperature so the temperature here has increased by almost 5 degrees uh, which in some cases might be detrimental so let us see how can we improve this operation with the help of a cascade control strategy <coughs> so let me redraw the figure again <coughs> So again our objective is still outlet temperature and then the manipulated input is still the wall opening. We are not changing the process, we are just changing the way this controller is going to react uh, because uh, the controller which we have seen earlier was a reactive uh, it showed reactive response, it, rea it reacted to the disturbance. Now we will see can we preempt uh, this uh, effect of this disturbance by taking uh, the advantage of the fact that uh, the wall dynamics are much faster compared to the process. So if we can limit the effect of this disturbance up to the wall, then can we improve the performance of this system. So what I mean by that is, uh, here uh, when we are saying we are controlling this temperature uh, by manipulating this wall actually what we are interested in is manipulating the temp uh, controlling the temperature by manipulating the amount of fuel which goes into the system so what we are interested in is for a particular temperature set point we want a certain flow of the fuel which goes in so we might be interested in controlling the flow as well so we might be interested in controlling the fuel flow as well but we have only one wall opening so let us consider uh, that uh, we use the flow controller on this so we measure the fuel flow and accordingly 
manipulate the valve <coughs> now as we have used uh, this manipulated variable now how do we control the temperature so now we again go back to the logic of our earlier control system that uh, when we want to control the temperature we want to manipulate the fuel flow so uh, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to have a temperature controller which will have its own set point and the output of this controller will actually act as a set point for this flow controller so this controller uh, the temperature controller is going to tell me that for a particular requirement of set point temperature and the current temperature what should be my flow of the fuel going into this furnace and then that will act as a set point for this flow controller which is going to manipulate uh, this wall opening so now you can see that uh, we have now having two controlled variables temperature and flow and they both are connected together through a only single manipulated variable which is wall opening in such a way that uh, the output of one acts as a set point for the other so these two are cascaded together so that is the name so these two control loops are cascaded together <coughs> So this temperature controller loop is known as a primary loop because that is what our main objective is and the secondary control loop is a uh, this flow controller is a secondary control loop because this is done in order to improve the performance. Now let us see how would it improve the performance of this system. Let us consider the same uh, disturbance uh, as earlier that uh, this inlet pressure changes and the temperature is still at the set point. So now as the temperature is at its set point, uh, the corresponding uh, flow set point would be same as the steady state flow which in this case was 600 and now because of this inlet pressure disturbance, the flow is going to increase and this flow controller will detect that change in the flow and it will try to cut down the wall <coughs> opening such that the flow which goes to the furnace still remains same as the original steady state value which was 600. So you don't uh, rely on this flow to make changes in terms of furnace operation, have an increase in the temperature in order for controller to take action. The controller directly reacts to this disturbance and for the con this secondary controller, the process transfer function is same as the wall transfer function which was much faster compared to the process uh, original process transfer function. So this controller is going to be really fast in terms of rejecting this disturbance. So more or less this flow which goes to the furnace would remain very close to 600 and then because of that the temperature would not uh, go to a very high value. So let us see these uh, responses. Uh, they are plotted at the same on the same scale. So you can see that uh, on the right hand side uh, because of this flow controller which is very fast the increase in the flow was very small compared to the previous case and it also got stabilized uh, regulated back to the original value and that resulted in a very small disturbance in terms of furnace operation and you can see that the furnace temperature more or less remains very close uh, to the set point value there is very less offset in terms of temperature. So what we can see that by using this cascade control strategy we have reduced uh, the or uh, we are effectively regulating a disturbance which was happening in the manipulated line. So this is uh, more like a pro uh, proactive response uh, to the disturbance and that is the main advantage of a cascade control strategy that it will be able to reject uh, these disturbances which come into the secondary line. So in terms of a uh, block diagram if I want to show how this uh, strategy looks like uh, you can see that uh, the original uh, process is here which is the transfer function between the fuel flow and the temperature and this is the disturbance transfer function where the primary disturbance let us consider it is in the inlet temperature of the process stream. Accordingly you get the temperature uh, outlet of the furnace and then it gets measured through this measurement transfer function there is a set point on this temperature and then you have a primary controller which is a temperature controller. So this temperature controller is going in the output of this temperature controller acts as a set point for the secondary flow controller. So you can see that everything inside this dotted box uh, is a secondary control loop. Uh, so this is a flow control set point 
and for that uh, you have a transfer function which is this uh, wall transfer function uh, this is the disturbance transfer function which is a transfer function between this inlet pressure of the fuel gas and the outlet flow uh, fuel flow which has an another measurement unit and this is the secondary controller so you can see that uh, this uh, one secondary control loop is part of uh, this bigger loop which is the primary control line so you can see that there are two control loops here and if i want to analyze the response of this system uh, i will have to first uh, reduce this secondary control loop uh, represent it as a, uh, one transfer function uh, between this disturbance and outlet and another one between this set point and the outlet uh, we have seen that uh, how do you get those uh, this looks like a very good uh, which looks like very familiar to the feedback control system so this transfer function will be a regulatory transfer function and uh, this transfer function between u and m will be a servo transfer function and then accordingly we will have uh, another transfer system of control transfer functions uh, for the primary loop so let me show you what i just said <coughs> so if i want to draw the reduced block diagram so we have this temperature set point we have this temperature measurement this is the primary controller and the output of this is f set and between f set and flow and this is the secondary disturbance pd so this is a servo transfer function for the second loop and this is the regulatory transfer function for the second loop both will give me the flow and that flow will go to the process transfer function and this is the primary disturbance that will eventually give me the temperature so you can see that uh, this is a function of kc2 tau i2 and tau d2 considering it is a pid controller and same way this is a function of kc2 tau i2 tau d2 so if i want to now look at the effect of this uh, disturbance this disturbance or this disturbance on the final temperature we will have to look into this uh, closed loop tra transfer function which is a function of this gs2 so th the way my secondary controller is tuned those parameter values will decide the stability as well as the performance of this primary control loop so the conclusion here is secondary loop parameters affect the primary loop performance so that is why uh, if i want to tune uh, this cascade control uh, scheme uh, what i would have to do is i would have to first tune the secondary loop make uh, sure it is uh, perfectly tuned uh, the way we want and uh, then uh, once you have a good enough understanding or good enough satisfaction about the performance of secondary loop then only you will go with uh, tuning of the primary control loop so now if you see uh, when this uh, cascade control strategy will be effective the whole uh, motivation or the whole motivation for going with a cascade strategy was to reject the disturbance much faster before the process of uh, that disturbance affects the process so all we want uh, is that uh, this secondary control loop should take uh, action much faster compared to the primary control loop so your cascade control strategy will be very effective if, or it will only be effective if your secondary control loop is very fast and that <coughs> if uh, your secondary loop uh, is also of the same uh, time cons has the same dynamics as the primary control loop then your cascade control strategy will not be effective and it will work almost similar to your original with the non uh, <coughs> traditional control strategy of controlling temperature or the variable by directly manipulating the wall <coughs> 
no in uh, we have seen only one example uh, there are a lot of examples about cascade uh, control strategy uh, wherein uh, we would want to identify these intermediate uh, secondary control objectives which will improve the performance of the control system. Let me take another uh, very commonly used example of cascade system. <coughs> Let us say uh, a jacketed CSTR. Let us consider that uh, we are conducting a reaction which is exothermic and we are interested in controlling the temperature here <coughs> by changing the flow of the coolant. So, this is cooling water. So, you want to control the temperature <coughs> of the reactor by changing the flow of the cooling water through this uh, valve and you can see that it is a multi capacity process uh, uh, that uh, when you change this uh, coolant uh, valve it is going to first change the flow of the cooling water. Once that flow of the cooling water changes, uh, it will act as a change uh, into this jacket. So, the jacket temperature will change and once that jacket temperature changes through heat transfer, the reactor temperature will change. And if there is any disturbance upstream of this cooling water, which may be that uh, the inlet temperature of the cooling water has changed or it is the inlet pressure uh, of the cooling water which has changed, which has a minor effect. So, in that case uh, those uh, in order to reject those disturbances you will have to wait for uh, this reactor temperature to show any effect. So, in order to avoid that uh, you can again take use of a cascade control strategy. So, here the objective is in order to control the temperature of the reactor we want to maintain a certain temperature of the jacket. So, what you will have is a primary temperature controller which is going to give a jacket set point. So, you will have another temperature controller which will control the jacket temperature by manipulating the valve. <coughs> so, it will measure the jacket temperature and then this is our temperature set point. So, by using a temperature temperature cascade we can improve the performance of this cascade control strategy for disturbances which are happening in the manipulated line. So, cascade control strategy works or it improves performance. for secondary disturbances like uh, the disturbance in the fuel uh, flow line or here the disturbances in the coolant line. Now, if there was a disturbance in the inlet temperature, uh, there is no additional ad benefits which you are going to get uh, because of a cascade control strategy. It will have its own uh, transfer function to affect the temperature and the performance will be similar whether you use a cascade control strategy or not. So, keep that in mind that cascade control strategy is going to improve the performance only for secondary disturbances. And uh, one last point which I would like to make is uh, this secondary con control loop which we are using is uh, merely to take some action or to move the wall in the correct direction uh, in uh, anticipation or based on the disturbance. So, it is just a way to improve the performance. You do not necessarily need an offset free response here. As long as the wall takes an action before the uh, the disturbance affects the process, the objective of uh, improving the speed of response or improving the response of the cascade control strategy is satisfied. So, secondary control loop uh, may even, even the offset in the secondary control loop is uh, acceptable. So, a uh, lot of times what you would see is the secondary control loop is typically uh, taken as a P controller so that it has a faster response and even if there is offset that is not your, your main controlled objective as long as your final controlled objective which is a primary control objective uh, is maintained uh, without any offset uh, we are okay with the operation. So, lot of times <coughs> the secondary controller is a P controller or proportional controller as offset is not going to affect the performance significantly. And uh, 
As we have seen that this uh, cascade control strategy will work effectively when the secondary loop is faster than the primary loop. So obviously if your secondary loop has a dead time or it is slow, then definitely a cascade control strategy would not at all be effective. So in such a case, uh, it should not be used. So that was about the cascade control strategy and if you visit any industry you will see that lot of times uh, these uh, elevated temperature reactors uh, which have jacket those will have a cascade control strategy or uh, uh, any process which has a higher dead time and which uses a very common utility like steam or fuel gas so those kind of systems will also uh, the performance of those systems will be improved uh, by using a cascade control strategy. So we'll take a break here and when we come back, we'll look at the other advanced control strategies. Thank you.